Are proposed new protections for working women overdue? They are indeed, or so say women who've lost jobs after becoming pregnant. Jan Crawford takes a closer look. For Michelle Durham, it was the perfect job, a paramedic for a national ambulance service in Alabama. She was 22 and her dream of a career in medicine was about to take off, or so she thought. Being able to help people, that was, that was my favorite part. I, I loved being able to help people when they needed help the most. Then, another reason to celebrate, a baby. I was only on the truck for six months before I found out I was pregnant with my son. Went to the doctor and had my visit, and she told me I couldn't lift more than 50 pounds. And why was that? Well, it's, it's a normal weight restriction for women when you're pregnant. And if you can't lift 50 pounds... I couldn't even lift the stretcher. It was 100 pounds without a patient on it. Michelle saw it as a temporary hurdle, assuming she could transfer to one of several open desk jobs for a few months. But her employer, Rural Metro, told her they were reserved for people injured on the job. Michelle's only option, 12 weeks of unpaid medical leave that would run out before she even had her baby. It was baffling, it really was, to help so many people and then not have help from the company that was hiring you to help these people. It's a story told hundreds of thousands of times every year across America. You can get the job, just don't get pregnant. I have a son, I have to feed him. When he needs something, I have bills to pay. Hatchler Cyril was a passenger services representative at JFK Airport in New York. With a six-year-old son and another baby on the way, she was determined to keep working throughout her pregnancy. But one day she stumbled while putting a heavy suitcase on a luggage belt and got pulled onto it. I'm screaming. Anybody can hear me? Stop the bell. I'm thinking about, am I really going to die? Am I really going to die? She was rushed to the emergency room. She didn't lose the baby but she says she effectively lost her job. She too had asked for a less physically strenuous assignment during the remainder of her pregnancy, but her employer refused to reassign her. They're only thinking about them. They don't think about you as a worker because we do the most hardest job. They're not thinking about you. Roughly a quarter of a million women a year don't get the accommodations they need to keep working. Jillian Thomas is a senior attorney with the ACLU's Women's Rights Project. Okay. She says even though the Pregnancy Discrimination Act passed in 1978, from Wall Street to Walmart, pregnant women are still being forced to leave their jobs every day. It really is an economically disastrous decision for, for many working women. Getting pregnant can be an economically disastrous decision. Absolutely. That's because under the current federal law, while employers are prohibited from firing or refusing to hire pregnant workers, they aren't always required to make any on-the-job accommodations, such as offering more bathroom breaks or temporary desk jobs. Between 1997 and 2011, the number of pregnancy discrimination charges filed at the EEOC went up by 50 percent. And sometimes it leads to even more tragic consequences. I went through college and got a uh, bachelor's degree in uh, criminal justice. And oh, so psychology. you were always interested in yes, criminal justice. Yes. And then when I found the uh, prison system, I, I felt like that was a, a good fit. Sarah Kugel worked as a corrections officer at the California Correctional Institution. I wanted to do things the right way, go to school, then get the career, and then have the family, and we, we put things off for a while. In 2017, after three years on the job, Sarah got the news that she and her husband Michael had been waiting for. She was going to have a baby. Extremely excited, yeah, but then scared, because then, oh my gosh, now what? Sarah spoke with her manager. She goes, if you bring in any note from your doctor that restricts you, um, you're, you're, you'd be unfit for duty. You cannot work. So they were willing to make no accommodations whatsoever. whatsoever. Needing to pay the bills, Sarah saw no choice but to keep working. Everything was fine for a while. Then in her seventh month of pregnancy, 
a prison alarm goes off. It's an instinctive run. And the next thing I know, I'm going down. Immediately um, felt pain in my lower abdomen. Sarah went to the ER, where doctors reassured her, thankfully, her baby was okay. Nine weeks later, she went into labor. And the doctor's in there, and he's, he's looking for the heartbeat, and he's over here on my left side. He says, there's no heartbeat. It didn't occur to me um, that my baby was gone. When Sarah fell in the prison yard, she had a placental abruption. Her placenta had separated from the uterus. Her baby, Mackenzie, was delivered stillborn. They wheel in the, the baby, and she's wrapped in a pink blanket. <laughs> That's when I find out I had a girl. <laughs> It really is a Hobson's choice that, frankly, no woman should have to be, be faced with. A woman who's been told by her physician you have to take the following precautions at work in order to have a healthy pregnancy, she presents those to her employer and is told, no, you either work at full capacity or you go home. Stand with Peggy! Stand with Peggy! The Supreme Court Stand weighed in on this Peggy. issue in 2015, ruling for Peggy Young, a pregnant UPS employee who was denied light duty during the last months of her pregnancy. But despite that decision, two-thirds of pregnant women asking for accommodations at work have still lost in court. I think that there is some unconscious bias there that because pregnancy is uh, voluntary or a chosen condition, that in some way it's less deserving. There's been some progress. 27 states have passed laws that require employers to offer pregnant women the same accommodations they would make for workers with a disability. But many say what's really needed is a new federal law. Under the 41-year-old law, it's very, very challenging for pregnant women to bring a claim and to prevail uh, to get the support and relief that they need. Enter Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici, a Democrat from Oregon, and Congresswoman Jamie Herrera Butler, a Republican from Washington. They are co-sponsors of a new bill, the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, that would make it easier for women to get temporary accommodations during their pregnancies. It's good for the health of the economy, as women make up over half the workforce, right? Herrera Butler has had some firsthand experience. She's had three babies while serving in Congress. We're asking for a reasonable accommodation, which is basically the exact same standard as the Americans with Disability Act. I think most people would assume that it is required to say, yeah, okay, you can have an extra bathroom break here, or you get to or carry, you, you get to keep down your, the policy or, right. is no water here, but you get to carry your water with you. These are reasonable things. Most people would expect this already is the law, I would think. And it's not. But it's we soon. hope it is soon. Yeah. But Congress has considered this bill with different sponsors before, for the past seven years. In October, it finally got a hearing, but there's still a long road ahead. I don't think this is an equality issue. This is an equity issue, because last I checked, men can't get pregnant. This is the uh, little beanie that's in the picture here. Yeah. Since our interview, Sarah Kugel settled with the Department of Corrections. She's also joined a class action lawsuit to try to change the policy on accommodations for pregnant corrections officers in California. And she's pregnant again. I look at this as, as hope, that this is, this is what I'm, I'm still fighting for. If there's a woman that was thinking about getting into law enforcement, I would, at this point, right now, I would steer them away from Department of Corrections because this is not a department for you because they, they won't care. And if you don't want to accommodate me, accommodate the baby. Hatchelor Cyril gave birth to a healthy baby girl in October. She's filed a discrimination complaint with New York City's Commission on Human Rights and is still unemployed. If all of us make a voice, things can change. That's yeah, the other playground. Michelle Durham sued her former employer, Ambulance Service Rural Metro, and a judge ruled in favor of the company saying the law does not require an employer to provide special accommodations to its pregnant employees. Her appeal will be heard this week. I know it won't change what's happened to me. I know it won't change where my path is going, but it needs to be corrected for somebody else. All right, ready? 
After having her son, Aiden, in 2016, Michelle is now working at a pet store. She feels her dreams of a medical career are dashed. I changed my whole life path with one decision. To get pregnant. I couldn't have the EMT job and my son. Is that a decision men have to make? 